This is a recording of my blog post on the new Alexander Hamilton sculpture at the U.S. Coast Guard Academy. If you prefer to read rather than listen, the URL is on screen. On October 12th, 2018, an eight-foot-tall sculpture of Alexander Hamilton was unveiled at the United States Coast Guard Academy in New London, Connecticut. Details follow on the roles of the Class of 63, the Alexander Hamilton Awareness Society, landscape architect Brian Kent, and sculptor Ben Victor. First section, Hamilton and the Genesis of the Coast Guard. Secretary of the Treasury Alexander Hamilton created almost single-handedly a plan for paying off the enormous debts incurred by the United States in its battle for independence, and funding the operations of the federal government. As income, Hamilton relied mainly on taxes on imports. Congress had established the U.S. Customs Service on July 31, 1789, to collect customs duties. After approving Hamilton's financial proposals, Congress passed on August 4, 1790, quote, an act to provide more effectually for the collection of the duties imposed by law on goods wares and merchandise imported into the United States and on the tonnage of ships or vessels." End of quote. The Revenue Marine, which is now the U.S. Coast Guard, began with 10 ships. It is America's oldest continuous seagoing service. The U.S. Navy and the U.S. Marines were not established until April 1798. Next section, the U.S. Coast Guard Academy, Class of 63. In 2013, the Class of 63 began considering a gift to the Coast Guard Academy in celebration of their 50th anniversary. The Academy's grounds in New London, Connecticut abound in memorials, as I saw when I wandered through them on the day of the dedication. But none of the outdoor memorials is a large-scale figurative sculpture. The Class of 63 had the wonderful idea of commissioning an eight-foot-tall bronze sculpture of Alexander Hamilton the father of the Coast Guard. Why? As one of the plaques behind the sculpture says, quote, we ardently, ardently hope this monument, placed before the hallowed hall that bears his name, will foster future generations' understanding and appreciation of his perseverance and courageous leadership, and be therefore even better prepared than we to be always ready to serve country and humanity. Uh, you can pause this and read the plaque in its entirety if, you, entirety if you like. Raising the funds, finding a sculptor, planning a setting, and getting all the necessary permissions was the work of a committee of Class of 63 members led by Mike Burdian, Dave Andrews, Rudy Peschel, and Ed DiMuzio. Their goal was to have the sculpture ready to dedicate at Alumni Weekend in October 2018, marking their 55th anniversary. Next section. The Alexander Hamilton Awareness Society. When they decided to commission a sculpture of Hamilton, the class of 63 contacted Rand Cholet, president and founder of the Alexander Hamilton Awareness Society. The AHA Society is a national nonprofit educational organization dedicated to presenting scholarly and accurate information about Alexander Hamilton in an engaging way. Nicole Cholet de Villavicencio, vice president and co-founder of the AHA Society, has photos of every known Hamilton sculpture in the United States, an invaluable resource for anyone creating a new sculpture. The AHA Society also has close contacts with Hamilton scholars throughout the country. Ren Cholet suggested to the class of 63 and sculptor Ben Victor that Hamilton's facial expression reflect his true nature as a visionary with an engaging personality. Quote, in order to get many of his architected systems and programs enacted by Congress, Hamilton had to develop a good rapport with many in the House and Senate, as there was at times a subset of strong opposition to be overcome. End of quote. 
Next section, landscape architect Brian Kent. A sculpture can gain great impact by way of its setting. Farragut on the left would be less evocative without its pedestal. Glory of Commerce on the right without Grand Central Terminal behind it would be simply odd. It was decided to place the sculpture in front of Hamilton Hall. Since Hamilton Hall was a very large brick building, even an eight foot tall sculpture could be lost against it. The class of 63 called on Brian Kent to design an appropriate setting. He created a brick approach to the sculpture and a low wall behind it. On the wall are five plaques that set the context for Hamilton in the Academy. Again, feel free to pause and read these because I'm not going to read the text aloud. Uh, these are the instructions to the captains of revenue cutters with the signature of Hamilton and quotes from Hamilton. This is the dedication plaque that we saw before. And these are the plaques on the revenue cutter scammel and the congressional act creating the Coast Guard with reproductions of Hamilton's and Washington's signatures. Next section, sculptor Ben Victor. Monumental bronze sculptures are not made overnight. In fact, they're not usually made within a year. For work on a site such as the U.S. Coast Guard Academy, a design has to be approved by numerous organizations. Then a small model is created for the approval of committee members. Once that's approved, the model is scaled up. The full-size model is cast in bronze and the sculptor files away by hand the bits and pieces that are left from the casting process. Then he polishes the sculpture and applies the patina. Finally, the sculpture is carefully packed and hauled to its site where it's installed on the pedestal with enough invisible underpinnings to hold it permanently upright. The class of 63 was intent on dedicating the sculpture on Alumni Weekend 2018, the 55th anniversary of the year of their graduation. By early 2018, Brian Kent's plans for the setting of the new Hamilton sculpture were well underway, but the sculpture was not. The artist who originally took the commission and submitted a preliminary sketch was not able to continue with the project. In February 2018, the committee of the class of 63 decided to find another sculptor. Dave Andrews interviewed or reviewed in detail six sculptors. Two well-qualified sculptors could not meet the October 2018 deadline. Three others did not have a sufficient body of work or had other issues that precluded commissioning them. Ben Victor had a stellar resume, including two sculptures in Statuary Hall in the Capitol, one of which is on the right. The class of 63 and the Academy's superintendent had approved in a preliminary sketch by the original sculptor, a large standing figure of Hamilton. That sketch showed a figure with one foot on a rock. Ben suggested that Hamilton stand on flat ground because large bronze sculptures need to be firmly attached to their support, and attaching one to an irregular surface such as, rock, such as a rock is far more difficult than attaching to a flat surface such as a pedestal. Hamilton holds a sheaf of papers. This is the letter of instruction to the commanding officers of the revenue cutters dated June 4th, 1791. It includes these words, quote, they will always keep in mind that their countrymen are free men and as such are impatient of everything that bears the least mark of a domineering spirit. They, the commanders of the cutters, will therefore refrain with the most guarded circumspection from whatever has the semblance of haughtiness, rudeness, or insult. They will endeavor to overcome difficulties, if any are experienced, by a cool and temperate perseverance in their duty, by address and moderation, rather than by vehemence or violence. That's transcribed from the plaque behind the statue. Rain Cholet provided a high resolution digital image of the original manuscript of these instructions that were written for the revenue marine officers. Ben and his assistants traced the words onto clay, 
reproducing exactly Hamilton's handwriting. If you're tall enough, you can read Hamilton's signature on the papers he's holding. If you're not, it's also reproduced on the plaque behind Hamilton. Normally, Ben would do his own historical research, but the looming deadline didn't allow for that. So one day in March, Rand Cholet shared extensive details about Hamilton's life, legacy, good deeds for others, and key relationships. Members of the Alexander Hamilton Awareness Society, including me, were consulted, were consulted about appropriate costume and even such details as the shape and length of Hamilton's ponytail. To save time, Ben skipped the small models and began working directly on the full-size clay model. It was cast in a foundry in Wyoming in September and early October. The finished sculpture traveled 2,200 miles to the Academy, where it was installed on Wednesday, October 10th, a mere two days before the dedication. Next section, the regimental review of the Academy Corps of Cadets. After the dedication and a celebratory lunch that included remarks from members of the class of 63, the sculptor, the architect, and the president of the AHA Society, participants were invited to the regimental review of the Academy's Corps of Cadets. I'd never seen such a review and I found it moving, which is an odd word for a military exercise, but the right one, I think. Seeing an action done very precisely by people who are clearly proud of their work often has that effect on me. And because I have a doctorate in classics and can't resist a good Latin phrase, the motto of the U.S. Coast Guard is Semper Paratus, always ready. The motto of the Academy is Scientiae Cadet Mare, the sea yields to knowledge. The mottos are on banners that line the thoroughfare in front of Hamilton Hall. Thanks to everyone who made this sculpture and this event possible, and many thanks for inviting me to, par to participate. If you don't already belong to my Sunday recommendations list, you can join it by visiting that URL or just email me. You can also support me starting at $5 a month or follow me for free on Patreon. Uh, Patreon subscribers get all my blog posts in video form and they also get free Patreon supporters also get notices of upcoming exhibitions that I think might be of interest. And you can check out dianderantiwriter.com for hundreds of posts on sculpture, painting, music, poetry, Central Park, and my other obsessions. Thank you so much for listening.